it's been just like this is the last in the series, and it's been a really great um, experience for me. And everybody, I'm... give a big clap to Glenn. Yeah. Yeah. Bigger than mine. I appreciate it. Um, so thank you so much for coming and making it happen, and for the tweets and using the hash CU Atlas because it shows people who work for and at and with CU Atlas that this is been a successful um, series. So tonight, actually what we're doing is we have entrepreneurs stationed out just outside the door. So we're going to have some one-on-one -on -one time with some successful local entrepreneurs who have created brand portfolios and brand identities for themselves and for other companies, actually walk you through the process. And this is how we did it. Wow. You know, this is what it looks like. This is how long it took. So kind of some, re some real tangibles around what we've been talking about for the past four weeks. And I'm really excited to introduce um, the, actually there are five of them, uh, five folks. Um, Ryan Olke, and you'll see their, their Twitter names will be on the table. Um, and you'll get a few minutes with each and then we're going to switch, okay? So Ryan Olke with Power Up Productions. Um, he'll be talking about podcasting, vidcasting, casting. Um, Chelsea from Fresh, Fresh Twist, she'll be talking about brand identity, eco, so making your company green, uh, green business cards, these sorts of things. Really uh, interesting story that she has. Uh, Jeffrey Laramore will be talking about stuff in my beard, basically taking a concept and making it a reality from you know, logo to business card to website to product and you know, on and on and on. How do you build from the tiniest idea, the tiniest kernel of an idea to an entire um, brand and marketing strategy. Casey Capshaw is a uh, fellow marketer and uh, he has done a number of different kinds of campaigns right now. He's teaching people how to use WordPress creatively. So if you're interested in CMS, content management systems, um, you'll want to check his table out. And what's his name again? Casey Capshaw. Uh, and then Forrest Linden, you'll see him because he has a 50 inch uh, screen on his table. And he'll be talking about Joomla and um, creating. Is anyone familiar with Joomla here? Some people have <laughs> it. Okay. So it's another, it's a different content management system uh, like WordPress or Drupal, basically managing your content online. And uh, all of these guys do great and fantastic creative work. So, what we're going to do is uh, three to four max at a table, and you have 15 minutes, about 10 to 15 minutes, and I'll just yell switch. And it'll be like musical chairs. And um, if you have any questions, ask them. And then we're going to do a panel afterwards. So we can drink coffee. Think Sydney's coffee the whole time. You can just hang out. And it'll be kind of like a coffee shop atmosphere. Um, I'm really excited to have those guys here. And let's get started. Pat Forrest. Starting with Forrest. <laughs> Pat Forrest Linden. Pat Ryan Olke. You can spell that. O-E-L-K-E. -E. Don't read my tweets. <laughs> Don't read my tweets! How's that for marketing? <laughs> I'm saving you from it's me. reverse psychology. Right. At Fresh Twister. At Casey Capshaw. I'm at J Longtime. I'm at J Lyremore. L-A-R-R-I-M-O-R-E. And don't read mine either. I'm pretty blunt and offensive. <laughs> Uh, so I, it, you guys all got a chance to meet. I know there's one group that you weren't able to, to talk with, you know, like you didn't get to hit everyone, but I wanted you to kind of get a quick speed dating, uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one with these guys. Did it go okay? Mm -hmm. All right, round of applause for talking that much, guys. <laughs> um, so today's the last class in the series, and I decided to bring smarter people than me in uh, and let them talk to you about the social web and... Why it's, <laughs> why it's so cool, and um, maybe uh, just hear, hear their perspectives on uh, what they think is coming next around the bend in the social web, and what they're currently doing, what projects they're working on that we can learn from. So we're going to start uh, the panel with Ryan Olke, um, and he has a couple of LLCs, Power Up Productions and Rolke Creative. Yeah. Ryan, you have a pretty successful podcast, I would say probably one of the most successful in its field, and um, the question for you is, what pointers do you have for people uh, listening to the live stream right now or in the room just wanting to get started with the podcast and they want to make it a smash hit? Like, what are your top three things? Number one uh, would be focusing on content. Um, don't just get a mic and start talking, you know, and just put that up there. I know that's easy to do, but it's kind of like with blogging. Everyone has a blog, right? 
So if you want it to stand out, you need to spend some more time designing it. And really start with something that you're passionate about. Um, for my show, Buddhist Geeks, we created a show that we wanted to hear for us. And what happened is that naturally, a lot of other people out there who are like us said they love the show. So that's the first place to start. Don't jump to the technical stuff, and, which is very tempting to like get gadgets and get the programs and start messing with that. But just spend time thinking about what you're doing with the show. Like, what's your purpose for having it? So it seems obvious, but, you know, maybe for others, so maybe not so obvious. I'm at the Case and I both worked at a startup where we created shows, and we spent a lot of time just talking about what's the vision for the show. And Why are we creating it? Maybe you can jump in and tell us about what that, what that show was, what those shows were. Mm, well, uh, the, the idea was... We, we created a network of podcasts, so it was called fallingfruit.tv, and we were trying to hit the low-cost market, like the Whole Foods kind of crowd. And we created a, a whole series of shows, and um, I produced a show called The New Man, which was a men's issues uh, show. We did some market research, um, but it was kind of what Ryan said, but it was fueled by what we wanted to, to hear. And this show's, it, this show's still around. It's on First Life Media Network with my show, and the thing was is that Casey really took the realm on uh, uh, doing the design and creating the show and when I sat down to the first pilot episode I was like this is awesome like I had no idea what it was at first but I was like I need to be part of this that's the reaction that I want when I create a show out of somebody is that this is what I need to hear the technical stuff will follow you know you, if yeah. I had to add anything it would be commitment like right <laughs> you have to commit <laughs> you know a Buddhist Geeks has been around for a couple of years and now it's got a pretty sized lot but you know first was and we've only missed like two people. or three weeks yeah Consistency and commitment. You want to, if you're going to do it, do it for a year or six months. Put a big timeline on it and do it consistently. Yeah. What were the other two things? Now the other two things, right? What do I say? So number two would be, yeah, technical. Um, a lot of people ask me like, whoa, what's the mic I could get for like under a hundred dollars? That's fine. Uh, but the thing is, is like, so I, I have a studio. I have professional microphones. I spend time in post production. I'm not telling you to do all that. But if you can get a good microphone, like a Rode Podcaster, for $230, you're going to sound so much better. You're going to sound professional. So to spend a little bit of money, if you can, on a USB microphone is going to help you out a lot. Whatever you can do technically, and whatever you can afford, whatever you're willing to learn to do that, because it's going to push you up in terms of quality. And because there's so many podcasts out there now, in all kinds of niches, Buddhism included, you know, you're going to be competing with other folks, and people make impressions, you know, first impressions of, I hear this podcast doesn't sound very good, even though the content might be good, and they hear another one that sounds like NPR, mm -hmm. they might look, listen to that one. But I do say content's more important, but, you know, nowadays you need to stand out. I don't know what I would say for the third one, marketing probably, right, yeah. Casey? Be reasonable on expectations. <laughs> yeah, that's good. We didn't make a lot of money with Falling Fruit. Yeah, okay, yeah, don't, <laughs> don't expect to make... Don't expect to make money off of it. Do it for the love and do it for other reasons. Like if you have a career that matches up with your show, use that energy uh, from that show to help you out in that realm. Mm -hmm. um, but a show actually takes probably minimally six to nine months to even develop some sort of maturity. So you've got to be in for the long haul. And it wasn't until this year that my show started reaching higher numbers. We were kind of hovering around 25,000 downloads and we doubled that. But that's like two years, two and a half years. So. Mm -hmm. If you have 